Hey everybody, it's Doug Schell for 3 Max Oceanside and MakeManYourHome.com. Uh, today I'm going to sit down with David Cheever and he is the Vice President of the Bicentennial Committee of the State of Maine. We're going to talk about Maine 200. You know, 200 years ago Maine became a state and there's a ton of great events and everything going on this year and we're going to talk about all that. So let's do this. All right, everybody, I am here with David Cheever, and he is the vice chair of the Bicentennial Committee. And uh, I'm really excited to talk with David. He's, uh, you know, he's going to fill us in on what's going on with Maine 200. Maine's been around for 200 years, and um, it's going to be great to kind of dive in and see, like, what kind of fun things are planned and just talk about uh, one of my favorite things, the state of Maine. Um, so, David, thank you for joining me. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day. Thank you, Doug. Uh, and I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, yeah. We share a certain enthusiasm about the state of Maine. Yeah. You know, we have it, and everybody in the Bicentennial Commission has it as well. That, yeah, that's that's awesome. I mean, I, you know, I've been here for over 25 years, and I've had a I've I've had a love affair ever since I've come to this beautiful state. So I'm I'm really excited to chat with you. Um, hey, before we you know jump into the you know the Maine 200 and and like everything that you're doing there, why don't we? I thought it'd be fun to just kind of talk about like the history of Maine in general. Like, what can you tell us about like, uh, you know, when Maine became a state and like the statehood of Maine and how that all kind of progressed? Well, it's uh, actually goes back further than the 200 years. We, yeah. we go back uh, 400 years really um, because we were part of the original group. The, the, uh, the Puritans who came over, the, the colonists who set up shop and for us to become a state, it, it really came down to the discovery of two things. Uh, one was the abundance of fish in the Gulf of Maine, and two was the abundance of trees, particularly trees that could be made into ships and yeah. ship masts. Sure. And the, the value of what we know today to be the Northern Forest, uh, over 5,000 Eastern white pines were harvested in Maine wow. uh, to build the ships uh, for the French and the English. And, and the tussle is there between those two countries over who was going to prevail. So when you look at the early days of Maine, the province of Maine became uh, associated with the English through the Treaty of William and Mary that goes back to 1596. Wow. So you know, they, they knew it was there and they were gonna do something about it. But when you, when you roll the thing forward, where Maine really was, the English had penetrated as far as the Kennebec River the Penobscot and the St. John were considered more of the French influence. And when you looked at establishing a colony, um, the province of Maine really took it to the watershed of the Kennebec. And that's one of the reasons why when Maine became a state in 1820, we really didn't know where the northern boundary was. We hadn't defined <laughs> it. So yeah. it took to, that was 1820, and it took the, the uh, Webster-Ashburton Treaty of 1842 to define what the northern boundary of the state of Maine was. Oh, wow. It took that long. Wow. It took that long. And, yeah. and when that happened, uh, we were facing the British for a third war, hmm. the Great Aroostook War of 1838-9, where the, the militia of the United States or the you know, far away from as South Carolina were coming to, to Aroostook County, Maine yeah. to face yeah. off against British soldiers over who had the rights to the forest in Aroostook County and, and really where was this boundary? Well, no shots were fired, uh, That's diplomacy good. prevailed, but that, that treaty, the Webster-Ashburton Treaty, defined forever not only the northern boundary of the state of Maine, but the northern boundary across to the Pacific. Oh, wow. It was a significant uh, treaty between the Great Britain and the United States. Well, Maine had already been a state for 22 years, and we became a state in part because, again, fighting with the British, we also were fighting with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, Maine men fought for uh, uh, the American cause in the revolution. And many of the men who served uh, were promised that they would get in exchange of, of their service, they would receive land grants in this place called Maine after the war. Well, mm. Massachusetts didn't really do that. Yeah. They just reneged on that and then uh, they promised that they would help us in, in what became the War of 1812, 
and Portland was burned to the ground. And he say, what happened to the help you guys promised? Yeah, well, yeah. Already this push, this idea that Maine was not being well represented in the Commonwealth in Boston. Right. Said, well, we can do better on our own. We, yeah. we can do that. We can be self-reliant. And the push began and the leader of that uh, and, and some of the names I could, I could run by you, but really the, the guy who was the, 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 the king of this was really the king of it, was William Kane out of Bath. Okay. He wanted to promote Maine statehood. Uh, they had, I think, ultimately nine votes, statewide plebiscites of, of what is now the province of Maine, but became the state of Maine. And saying, okay, are you in favor of doing this? Do you want to be independent of Massachusetts? Right. And it took uh, a vote in 1819 on the 26th of July, where they finally settled it and said, yep, we're heading towards statehood. But even then it was tied up because for Maine to enter the, the United States as an independent state, they had to balance it off because Maine was coming in as a free state and the, the whole pressure of free versus slave and what do you do with the institution of slavery, it became the Maine-Missouri compromise. Uh, so in 2021, Missouri joins the United States, but it joins as a slave state. Mm. Maine was already in there in March of 1820 as a free state. Oh, and uh, yeah. our bicentennial was supposed to be in 2020, but uh, the pandemic wiped out most of that. Nevertheless, yeah. Doug, most of the planning was already done. We had things that we wanted to do. We wanted to commemorate Maine statehood. We wanted to bring people to Maine. We wanted Maine people to stay here and appreciate the state even more. Yeah. So those plans were put in place. We're ready to, uh, with any luck at all with this uh, COVID business, We'll have 2021 is main 200 plus one. <laughs> plus one. <laughs> plus one. I, I love that. Yeah, I love that. So yeah, that, that's a good segue into, you know, what what are kind of your plans for for the celebration, for lack of a better word, you know, to, to celebrate the 200 years? Um, like what's, uh, what's on the docket? What's on the agenda? Well, the biggest thing that we've done so far and what um, your your audience is going to be paying attention to, I hope, on the way by is out of the money that was appropriated to the Bicentennial Commission to, to do something, um, the commission agreed that the best thing we could do is have the people define what the Bicentennial commemoration would be. Oh, neat. And we instituted uh, community grants and we have over 165, 170 grants throughout the state of Maine of grants of up to $10,000 for communities and nonprofits to collaborate with partners uh, mm. or do something themselves to say, okay, here's how we view the importance of Maine being a state, what our history was, what we hope our future will be. Oh, and nice. so we have the retrospective, we have the perspective of the present, and we have the prospective of what we want in the future. Yeah. Virtually all of those projects, Doug, were suspended. Sure. They got the money, they are, they're gonna follow through on it. And whether it's a play, whether it's a concert, considering what you have for, for your vocation, let me give you a couple of examples. Blue Hill has a project where they're gonna identify every structure in town that dates to 1820. Oh, that's, that's cool. You go to Blue Hill and you see some of those ships, captains' homes, and some of the, you know, the large homes that they built them solid in 1820 they're still standing today. If you do the same thing, and Bath has done it, where they've gone through and they've identified, this is an 1820 building, this is an 1820 building. And you go through that community and you see historic Bath. It's astounding. Mm. It's amazing to see how many buildings are still standing today. You can do the same thing in Wiscasset, the same thing in Thomaston. We have structures that go back 200 years. Wow. That remain functional in their communities today. That that's that's really cool, David. I like that a lot. So what what did they do to on the on the structures? Did they put like a little plaque or something? They're or? Gonna put plaques. They're yeah, gonna, okay. Some of them will be plaques. Some of them will be color coded mm -hmm. uh, with with the date. You know, yeah. when was this structure built? And some of them, I think Bath has been able to go back and, and track ownership from the beginning right on up through to the present day. So when you, when you find the kinds of buildings, most of them homes, but still some businesses as well, where you say, 
this thing has been here for over 200 years. Isn't that, um, isn't that it's, it's a remarkable story. And we look at that and, and particularly in those communities, a lot of that has to do with the industry that was going on at the time. And whether you're talking about fishing or whether you're talking about building the boats to help the fishing mm -hmm. or doing the transportation of goods and services along the coast, right. we didn't have a highway, we had, we had the water. The waterway was our interstate. That's what, yeah, and, that was the way to get everything around. Yeah, yeah absolutely. The that, that dotted, you know, the 5,000 miles of coast that, I, I mean, you can go out anywhere in the state of Maine, get to the coast and go, wow, this is really something. Yeah. And then when you add to that, you know, the, the push inland where Maine's population grew exponentially from 1800 right up to the time of the Civil War with people who were coming to, to access the bounteous land that is Maine, the lakes, uh, the rivers, the, the forest, and to turn that into uh, some place to live, whether it was to farm or whether it was to manage the forest, uh, communities sprung up, the mill towns sprung up, yeah. and those are all part of our history. Yeah. And the idea is that, yes, we're going to acknowledge Statehood Day again. Uh, we have a kind of a neat idea for a time capsule, and we're, we're going to get a, a the composites people at the University of Maine have helped design and build a time capsule. Oh, that's cool. And, and we're going to be asking people what they think ought to be in it. And we're also encouraging communities that have been around for the 200 years. It's not just us. You know, John Jennings, the city manager of Portland said, look, you know, I'm going to have a time capsule for Portland. Well, yeah. you should. You know, yeah, anything that's been around that long and, and put in it what you want. Because if you think you're going to be there or for another 100 years or another 50 years, the kinds of things that you put there, you think about. And mm -hmm. the, the masthead uh, main people uh, are working with us on defining what would be good for a time capsule. They have that. We're not, um, we're not yeah. aware of any. We're not aware of any time capsules that were put in 200 years ago that we could open up, are there? <laughs> uh, no. Well, and that's one of the things that we were that helped in how we approach this. Yeah. Because in 1819 and 1820, the, the Constitutional Convention of 1819, these guys weren't sitting around Portland going, gosh, guys, haven't we had fun since 1620? <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Let's go celebrate. <laughs> yeah, so, true. Yeah. 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 They, they were, were probably ready to put it behind them, right? <laughs> well, that, and they'll go, we're going to be a state. <laughs> yeah. How the heck are we going to pay for it? <laughs> what are we going to do with it? Right, right. And, and we're in much of the same position today because we are no more awash with money today than we were then. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. How do we pay for what we want? What services are we going to provide? Where do we go from here? Right. So the idea was, if you're going to if you're going to do a, a heat check, if you will, say, okay, <laughs> where are we in in 2020 and now 2021? Where do we think we ought to go from here? Yeah. And that's part of what we were driving. And the the last event uh, of the bicentennial commission. Uh, that, that, that we actually are, are part of and are organizing is going to be an innovation expo in Portland uh, in November, where we're going to have um, people from Maine uh, who have achieved uh, some significance, you know, whether you're a NASA astronaut or whether you're an Olympian, whether you're a star of stage and screen, whether you're oh, yeah. a business executive, whether you're a student. Uh, we have people from Maine who have made their mark, not just in Maine, but throughout. And what right. we want is to, to spark the imagination, to spark the industry of people who are here today and say, wait a minute, I can do that. And that links in, interestingly, because part of what we're gonna do with the time capsule is to tap also into tomorrow. We don't know how many of us will be around in 25 years or in 50 years. Yeah or in 75 years, so that when that time capsule is opened in, in 2120, what's gonna be in it? So right. we're gonna be recruiting capsule keepers, the next generation that will come by in 2045. Oh, and that's cool. have yeah. a compartment of the time capsule where they're gonna add things to it. Oh, I like that. Yeah, sure. And then, then they're gonna do it again 25 years later. They're yeah. gonna recruit the next class of capsule keepers so that this becomes something that continues to grow and move forward so that when we go to 2120, you'll be around, 
you can report on it. <laughs> hey, hey, here's, here's our time capsule. Look at the stuff that we have here. I know. I know life expectancy is doing well, but I don't know if it's doing that well. well you know, are we going to put an N95 mask in? <laughs> right. That, you know, it doesn't take up a lot of room. Like this. But we've got yeah. some explaining to do on why was the capsule not completed in 2020? Because I don't know. Completed in 2020. You know, I don't know why my brain is going here, but all I can think of is like 100 or 200 years down the road, somebody opens it up and reads a Stephen King novel. I don't know why that's. <laughs> and why not? Yeah, why not, right? <laughs> why not? But yeah. I don't yeah. think his words are going to be any less read in, in 100 years than they are now. Yeah. Penny, um, Pennywise the clown is going to make a comeback, you know, in, in 200 <laughs> years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. another thing that we want to do, again, mindful of, of our history, is we hope to have, and these will be localized, which is kind of, I think, what you want to do here is we have the uh, maritime industries mm. represented in, in things like, for example, I was, I was on the uh, folks with Rockland today, um, where they're planning an event around the 4th of July where they have the Windjammer oh, fleet, you know, they have they have a localized thing. So yeah, they're looking to put a Fourth of July together with a bicentennial fervor to it. You know, have a concert, fireworks, and it's so local yeah. that it speaks to everybody there. But they want their neighbors to come in too. And right. we're looking at Booth Bay, Portland, and then there's a Penobscot Four Port Loop that we think is going to work out nicely. Where Castine, Searsport, Bucksport, and Bangor Brewer. We'll come in so you go right up the Penobscot River, oh, uh, where yeah. you have sailing vessels of of all kinds, and we hope to gather a couple of large ones. But the idea is that that they harken back to the time when Maine was the premier shipbuilding state in the, so, in the country. That's so that's so great. Jeez. Um, well, give something to look at. I'll tell you that. Yeah, geez, I can't wait to see some of that stuff. Uh, how do uh, how does how does everybody kind of keep up to date as far as what's happening? Is the is the website the best place to look at or? Yeah, the the main two hundred dot org main two hundred dot org is the website, and what we've tried to do is obviously maintain that with a schedule, and and you dive in anywhere. There's a bunch of stuff on that website. Yeah, uh, we have we have a lot of videos. We have. Uh, a lot of news. Uh, we have historical vignettes. We've got things there that people can look at at main200.org. And we've asked all of those recipients of the community grants to update for us when they propose to hold their event or, or conduct their program so that we have that there. So you have, we'll, you'll have everything documented oh yeah, right there. Yeah, oh, and we opened it up too so that, so that like Lemoyne in, in 2020, Lemoyne was 150 years old. Oh yeah, yeah they cool. got stung the same way we got stung. Right, and they couldn't really do what they wanted to do. So right. we said, "Well, all right, you any town, any organization wants to put something on the calendar, so that if you're putting, like, say, a weekend trip or a week trip together, and say, okay, well, I can go here, 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 and here, I can tie in a visit to a national historic landmark, a national scenic landmark, this program here, this event there." We can we can fashion a pretty good week, two weeks, three weeks um, of of things to do and places to go, people to see that make Maine so special. That that's so awesome. Yeah, geez, it sounds like uh, I mean, assuming we're going to be able to you know open up a little bit here in the summer and do a lot of these oh. events. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm crossing my fingers, um, but I, I'm excited. Yeah, we like just start planning a little summer trip, go around and see all of these you know bicentennial events. This sounds this sounds awesome. Yeah. Well, there are, there are over 40, for example, and Maine Historic Preservation Commission is going to do this, where they are highlighting some of the National Historic Landmark properties. Oh, nice. There are over 40 of them in the state, um, and they tell nothing less than the history of the entire United States. Wow. Uh, the cultural history, the military history, commercial history, uh, it's really an amazing list of places that are still standing and are still vital to the mm -hmm. community. Yeah. There are national scenic landmarks where if you visit them, you realize why they've been regarded as so special. Yeah. I'll give you an example. You go out to Monhegan. Monhegan's less than two and a half square miles of yeah. property. 2.3 square miles of that property is a national scenic 
landmark. No, wow. When you look at the artist community on Monhegan, you look at how the population swells over the summertime because people go out there because they're inspired. Right. Well, anybody can go out to Monhegan, take the day trip, go out and spend the weekend and, right. and come to realize why this island has been so important. For example, the migratory birds. Yeah. The birds from around the world come to Monhegan because of the flight patterns of the migratory birds. Say, so, hey, okay. But you then look at the property itself and you think, wow, this is where John Smith set up his headquarters to map the coast of Maine. Yeah, isn't that After John Smith, the whole Pocahontas thing, he comes to Maine at the direction of the, of the, the crown and he maps the coast of Maine and he sets up on Mount Egan. That's well, so. you can stand there and look, say, you know, yeah, I could have done that from here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, that's, that's so a trip awesome. to take. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's so awesome. Um, if, we are uh, deep in history, Doug. We really are. I mean, yeah, and it's so funny. Like it's all right here in our in our state of Maine. There's, yeah. so, there's so many uh, there's so many great things to do, you know, anytime, but especially now with the bicentennial, to be able to really kind of you know find out more about this great state that we live in. If there was a if there was one or two things, David, that you were thinking through this process, you were like, "Geez, everybody's got to see this." Is there any like event that's kind of popping up in your head that's like, I can't wait for, for this to happen? Or is it the whole thing in, in total? Well, we have, obviously, the, we, we, we love the idea of the Innovation Expo because it's forward thinking. Mm. But one of the other things that we wanted to be sure to do was to plug into the idea of, of how historically we have come together as communities. And one of the things we've done is we've had parades yeah. where we have, and, and we're going to have a parade. And it's going to be in Wilson on Auburn, uh, probably in August, yeah, uh, sure. because we have to get by this. But it's got to be done before the school year begins. Yeah. And and when we do that, what we want to have is every county represented. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fifteen counties on a challenge, saying you need to put a unit into this parade. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to have. We hope to have a military flyover of everything that's in the Air National Guard. Yeah, we sure. want to have the the, the Army National Guard represented, we're gonna have public safety, we're gonna have uh, political world, uh, which will be a little less frenzied next year <laughs> than it was last year. Let's hope. But the idea that we have a parade that is at, at least the match of, if not surpassing any state of Maine parade in, in the state's history. Well, that's great. I, I'm, I'm all over that. That's, that sounds awesome. So like every county will have a, a float, so to speak, yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, what do you put in? And, yeah. and that, that in itself, Doug, when you think about it, what do you put in? Yeah. If you're Piscataquis County, what would you bring down to Lewis and Auburn to right. say, hey, we're Piscataquis County? Right, if right. If you're Arista County, what do you do? Yeah. I can tell you what Kennebec County is going to do. They're going to get the bateau at Old Fort Western in Augusta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it goes yeah. back to 1754. Isn't that something? Yeah. And they're going to put that. And we already know, for example, the University of Maine is, is going to honor the boat building industry, and they're going to put that boat that they made in the composites group. Yeah, that's yeah, going to sure. be part of the parade. Yeah, yeah, geez, that's going to be great. Yeah, the governor at, at this point, the governor has agreed to ride in that boat. Oh, nice. Yeah, and it's yeah, going yeah. to be nice. Yeah. So oh, that's, these that's are the kinds of things that we want to do, um, and then we will have a statehood day. It's not going to be on March 15th, which is the actual date when, when Maine became a state. We're going to have to hold that a little bit later. Right. And we may target that vote date of July 26th um, and do that in 2021 and have a, a formal ceremony with the legislative and, and other elective leaders uh, where we do that sort of pomp and circumstance piece. Yeah. We have the Poet Laureate do a presentation. We have the, the governor make a presentation. We have our congressional representatives uh, there and we, we, we present the formality of statehood. Yeah. This is our structure. That's and deep. we have a special uh, piece of music commissioned for this that we hope that the Bangor Symphony Orchestra is going to be there to play. Nice, uh, yeah. And it, it, it's gonna be premiered there. Right. And, you know, we've asked Maine Public and they've, they've agreed to do it so that you know, everybody will be able to see it. Yeah. And, and we think that is one where, for those who, who think, oh, history might be kind of dull. Well, this is the immediacy of our history. Right. These are the people who are entrusted by the voters 
to make decisions on our behalf. And if we don't take that, especially what we've been through in the last couple of years and months, where we say, you know, we do need to pay attention to right. what happens in our government. And we're going to have the people who are most responsible there for presentation purposes to say, this is Maine's 201st year. Right. We're good. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm so, I'm so excited about what what's going on this year. I just yeah I can't I can't wait I can't wait to see it all. It's well, funny. Got to get, get through this executive order stuff where we we once again can safely come together. We we will yeah yeah absolutely. everything's not going to be a Zoom. Right. <laughs> we're going to be able to <laughs> yeah yeah, show yeah, yeah. Other, even even six feet away from one another right. to make the contact with what is today's Maine. Yes. Who are we today? Right. And where do we want to go and acknowledge all of the things that took place to get us to this point. Yeah. Really good stuff. It, re it really is, it's awesome. I'm, I'm super excited to, to keep an eye on this and uh, I'll, I'll be in a lot of it, I guarantee that. Well, we'll keep you under surveillance. <laughs> you probably should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, any, uh, any, any final thoughts, any final words? I mean, of course, everybody should check out main200.org, but uh, you know, any, any last comments? Well, the thing is, Doug, one of the one of the things that we would challenge individuals and families to do because that's the other thing that's come come forward in all of this is understanding that that a lot of families come right down through people moved to Maine and they stayed yeah. and they stayed through generations and whether they were the French coming in to to work in the mills or whether they're the Italians who came in and did the stonework to to build the dams or or to build the mills and do the brickwork um, the 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 ethnicity of Maine is in our history. Mm -hmm. And those families came and they stayed. Yeah. And the staying power that is Maine is family-based as much as it is community-based. It's how they're all intertwined. Yeah. And how we look at the new Mainers and how we assimilate them and they assimilate us into their lives. That expression can take place in the bicentennial because yeah. it is not just looking backward. It is, it is acknowledging the, the past, it, acknowledging also the present and preparing for the future. So yeah. anybody can do something for the bicentennial. Yeah. It is something that it's say, this is what I do. This is my expression because Maine, more than many states, and Doug, you came here 25 years ago. Where'd you come from? New York, Buffalo, New York. Yeah. Buffalo, New York. Okay, Buffalo, New York. Everybody thinks Niagara Falls, right? Yeah. Well, when you say Maine, it conjures an image. Yeah. There's something about the state of Maine, no matter where you go, yeah. That when you say Maine, people think of something and it's something that we can all relate to. Well, that's what we want the people of Maine to do for the bicentennial. Do something that says, I am Maine. Right. This is, and Maine public is, I think, has this thing. That, what does Maine mean to you? What does it mean to be a Mainer? Well, take that challenge. I love that. Start yeah. asking that question. And when you come up with an answer, share it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, especially in this day and age, it's easy to share stuff. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, well, geez, David, that's awesome. Uh, thanks, thanks again so much for coming on here. I really, really appreciate it. Um, this was just a, a wealth of knowledge around, you know, Maine 200. And again, everybody, check out Maine200.org. And uh, and always remember, if you make Maine your home, you don't have to do it alone. There you go, Doug. Thank you. <laughs> I'm getting old.